If you're a pain patient being denied access to prescription pain medication or a provider struggling to treat patients, please contact your senators. I'm Claudia Mirandi, patient advocate and founder of Don't Punish Pain. Please visit us at don'tpunishpainrally.com. Nobody should have to suffer. My name is Joanne Cochiola and I live in Wisconsin. I have been a chronic pain patient for many years, following many, many surgeries. I've been a CNA for over 30 years. 14 of my surgeries have included both arms and both hands, but I always went back to work after these painful surgeries until 2008, when I could no longer do my job caring for the elderly. Now, my elderly husband takes care of me, because last year I was also diagnosed with many other major serious health problems, severe, where there is no cure, and will only continue to worsen as I age. I had a quality of life before that was being managed. I had, I, I had my horses. I rode my bike. I went for walks. I used to paint. And now, especially with all these new medical issues, and my pain relief now taken away, I'm a shell of who I used to be. I'm an unbearable pain 24 hours a day. And I have to lay down mostly all day long. And I cry in the morning in pain and cry all night in pain. And I become a burden to those I love. I'm a shell of, of who I once was. And I will be bedridden soon. Living in bed is not living. Living when in unbearable, excruciating pain throughout your whole body is not living. Is not living. You are you are not living anymore. It's not. It's just not. Hello, my name is Carol Adams, and I'm a 50-year-old pain patient. I've lived with chronic pain conditions for about 25 years now. First with fibromyalgia. I've had I've passed 13 kidney stones. Um, 15 years ago, I fell at work and fractured my back, two vertebrae and herniated two discs. I had a fusion and I went back to nursing. A little over nine years ago, I had another accident. It ruined my fusion. And I have two titanium cages sitting on spinal nerves at the base of my spine. There is no treatment for this other than pain medication. I would not be able to get out of bed I would, without pain medication, I would commit suicide. My family needs me here. My name is uh, Jesse Rain. I have CRPS and RSD uh, on top of degenerative arthritis and regular arthritis. And I have the arthritis and the CRPS and my right shoulder, both feet and ankles, and uh, and the degenerative arthritis in both ankles. Before my pain medication, uh, before I got diagnosed, it was a whole lot worse. With my medication now, I'm doing quite a bit better. I'm able to give back a little bit in a limited capacity. I'm able to put my foot up, keep my feet propped up in the chair at practice, and try and make an impact on young people's lives. And our next generation to me is where it is. Without my pain medication, I wouldn't be able to do that in that limited capacity. At 27 years old, I never thought I'd be in this spot. I've had numerous surgeries, multiple cleft palate repairs. Uh, flat foot reconstructive surgeries that have led to all this. 
and a shoulder surgery that led to this. Hi, my name is Abby. I now live in Vermont and I'm from Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, since I was 22 years old, I've had 12 major jaw surgeries. I've got a metal implant over here and major arthritis, major osteoarthritis and many, many complications, which I can no longer get looked at because the doctor, surgeons refuse to look at me because I've had way too many surgeries. I've also recently ha been diagnosed with an MRI with spinal issues. I've got compression, I've got vertebrae damage, I've got a lot, a lot of issues in there too and consistent pain. I moved here two years ago and I was made to get off my pain medication which I was comfortable with. I was able to do things. I was able to go out and go hiking and do a lot of other things. Um, I went to a doctor here. She told me absolutely not. I was not going to be getting any more pain medication and I was made to go through hardcore withdrawal with no help whatsoever. And me, I'm not an addictive personality. I did not go to a hospital. I didn't go anyplace else. I dealt with it. And now I'm mostly housebound because when you deal with pain, you're dealing with it 24-7. It's exhausting. And um, talking to the doctors here, I've been treated like, A, I'm an addict, which I am not, or I'd be drinking, and I don't. And... Um, I'm just I'm frustrated because they look at me and they act like I am just nobody I'm chronic and I need to just go home and deal with it this is unacceptable um, I'd like to have my life back I'd like to work part-time I would like to do many other things except deal with this chronic pain that I have that I've documented and I've had for a very long time thank you for listening hi my name is Dawn Anderson I live in Porridge Indiana I am 53 years old. I have bilateral amputations in both of the legs and I had a severe infection in the one leg which caused muscle and nerve damage. I was doing fine on opiates living a functional, productive, independent life for eight years until I was forced to taper off my medication. These are my prosthetics. See them? I was able to use them and walk and drive, rake my lawn, take care of my family. Since I was forced to taper almost two years now, I have been confined to a wheelchair. I am begging to get my functional, independent, productive life back. The only way that it happened was after two and a half years of alternative therapies, I was put on opiate pain medication. After the two and a half years, the doctor and I found the right drug at the right dose that allowed me not to be so drowsy and live a functional, independent life. I am just looking for that life back. I had it on opiates, and since I've been off the opiates, I have actually had um, lost the will to live. I don't want to be a casualty for undertreated pain, and something needs to be done. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nick Westerhoff. I'm from Indiana. Um, in 2008, I fell off a truck at work, and they said that I had degenerative neck disease, had cadaver bones put in, three fusion with a steel plate, C th or C4 through C7, and I've been in pain management ever since 2011. And ever since they took most of my pills away, I've been living a horrible, horrible life. Can't get doctors to help me. I just want to get my neck fixed. Here the past couple of weeks, I've been turned down by four. They don't want to mess with me. I mean, what's a person supposed to do? I don't, I don't understand what the FDA and all these people are trying to especially do to me if I could get fixed I wouldn't need these pills I wouldn't need nothing um, I don't know any more to say except for you know I just feel like crap and it isn't worth all this to me I don't know how much more I can take of this 
No one understands what I go through. Nobody. Thank you. My name is Eris Hilburn. I am from South Texas. I am a 37 year old female and I suffer from a chronic condition called hydronitis suppurativa. What hydronitis suppurativa or HS is, is a chronic health condition that leaves large painful abscesses and boils all over my body. Without pain medication, I wouldn't be able to do certain things such as bathe myself, do a load of dishes, things you take for granted like doing laundry or vacuuming the floor. <clears throat> because of the stigma surrounding use of pain medication in chronically ill patients, I have over relied too much on medications like Advil and Ibuprofen. Three months ago I started getting pain when I was eating and I was diagnosed with fatty liver disease. <clears throat> Two days ago, I was diagnosed with gastritis and that both my doctor attributes both to the overuse of ibuprofen. If the stigma wasn't so bad around chronic pain patients, I wouldn't be having this issue because I wouldn't be taking ibuprofen so much. I would be taking my pain medication. In a period of a week and a half, I lost 20 pounds because of the gastritis, because it hurt too bad to eat. I'm still having trouble eating. And I just want you to know that there's real consequences to not having access to proper medication management and there's people's lives are affected when stigmas surrounding use of chronic pain medication is perpetuated. Hi my name is Lisa Hines I'm from the state of Indiana been a chronic pain patient for several years now uh, it's gotten significantly worse since I had a car accident in 2015. Um, in addition, I've been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which has affected all of the joints in my body, primarily my hands, my feet, my knees, my hips, and again, my lower back. I've also been diagnosed with degenerative disc disease, uh, spinal stenosis. I have three herniated discs as well as a ruptured disc in my back and all of these I contribute to the pain that I, I have every day. Um, without pain medication I wouldn't be able to do the minimal activities of daily living that I do now. Barely get out of bed, I get a few things done, I have to really ration my time because of the amount of pain that I will suffer because of it. If I vacuum my living room I can only do that for one day and then the next day I might do a little bit of laundry um, I'm really not sure without my pain medicine what I'd be able to do it's really taken a toll on my life um, I've been through many different treatments and the only thing that's ever helped has been the pain medication Hi, my name is Tammy Cox, and uh, I live in Indiana, and my I have chronic hip pain, chronic back pain, severe arthritis in both my feet and my hands, carpal tunnel, possibly fibromyalgia. Um, before my pain meds, I couldn't get out of bed, I cried every day, I couldn't cook meals, I couldn't be with my family. With my pain medication, I can participate in my own life and try to have some semblance of happiness. Hi, I'm Paula Wright from Indiana. My meds were tapered in 2016 due to CDC regulations. They were more than cut in half. I have degenerative disc disease in my spine. I have cervical myopathy. I never can say that word, sorry. 
I have arthritis in my wrist and my hands. I have uh, arthritis in my both hips and in my knees. I have fibromyalgia. Um, a couple of other things, but we'll just stop there. No teeth due to failed surgery of working on my gums. Um, so they won't go any further with my low immune system. So, I don't do much. I have every, about every other day. I can run to the grocery store and do a quick errand. My dishes sometimes sit two or three days in the sink, which drives me nuts because I used to be OCD about my home. It's a mess. My husband, who has COPD and some arthritis, was on pain meds. Uh, his choice to go off of them because he didn't want to sign the pain contracts and turn his life over to the government. So he, he told his doctor to take them and shove them. And now he's on 800 milligrams of ibuprofen, which really do not help because he does nothing but sit in his chair. So that's our life as it stands right now. I sure would like to have my regular dose of meds back, and I hope I don't lose them at the beginning of the year. Just praying. Thank you. <laughs> it was a little bit later on, on the same day. Um, my medicine is starting to take effect, but it hurts actually more. My body just feels like it's on fire everywhere. Burning sensation is so bad. And I have pins and needles everywhere. Thousands of them sticking all over my body. I mean, like my eyeballs and my, and my hair. And this is the face of chronic pain. And I, this is with meds. A little bit I'll start to feel better because my meds is start taking more effect, but without my meds. It's like this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Thank you. Watch it. I'm viewing myself. Some of the chronic pain group suggested that we do this. You show what chronic pain really is like. This is what I look like when I first wake up in the morning. This is how I feel. When I don't have my meds, I take, I just took my meds and they haven't worked yet. Having chronic pain is like, It's like having a huge monkey on your back all the time. <laughs> Wake up every morning. If you if you sleep. If you sleep some. I used to sleep eight, nine hours a night. Now I sleep maybe six. I'm like eight. Because my medication's been tapered. But I wake up feeling terrible in the morning. My name is Stephanie and I am a chronic pain patient. I have debilitating scoliosis that uh, with my medication before it was cut, um, I was able to function, be able to get out of bed and have some type of quality of life. Due to the guidelines of the CDC, I have been cut by more than half of my medication and it has taken a much worse turn on my pain as I am unable to do the things that I was able to do with my pain medication. Um, as in, uh, I was able to socialize outside of the home. I was able to go to family functions. And now two years into 
my pain medication being cut, I am mostly bedridden and have a zero quality of life. And that's my story. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Christy Becker. I live in Wisconsin. I suffer from degenerative disc disease, spondylolisthesis, facet joint arthritis, and stenosis in my spine. Uh, my life with pain medication meant that I could spend time with friends, walk my dogs, take care of my house, um, and in general, try to have a little bit of quality of life aside from working full time. Without the pain medications at the level they were, I'm suffering every day, 24 hours a day, without leaving my house very often, not being able to take care of my house, spend time with loved ones, or basically do the things I did before without excruciating pain. I suffer because of the behavior of illegal behavior and I followed the rules and I have followed the rules but yet still being punished. The CDC guidelines are an overcorrection and something needs to be done because there's millions of people like me who are scared and suffering. Thank you. Hi, my name is Susan Weiner and I live in Fortville, Indiana. Um, I've had fibromyalgia diagnosed for the past three years, but I'm pretty sure I've had it for 10 plus. Um, today, I am non-functional. I can't hardly get out of bed. I can't walk without major pain. I feel like I need crutches. I take medication that's supposed to help me, but some days it just doesn't do anything. Um, I haven't gotten pain medication in the past two years. Um, <clears throat> and my quality of life has gone downhill. I'm now in the process of trying to get disability because I cannot sit in a chair and work all day. I cannot be on my feet for long periods of time. <clears throat> and I'm feeling more and more like an invalid and I'm only 47 years old. This has taken my life. It's taken my friends. It's taken family away. People think I make this up and trust me, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. So, please, please, please watch these videos. Understand there's a human face to chronic pain and don't lump us out in with other people because that's just not fair. Please, please, please do something about this. Thank you. Hello, my name is Justina from Pennsylvania. I have been diagnosed with CRPS of the internal organs, interstitial cystitis, gastroparesis, neurogenic bladder, pelvic floor dysfunction with marked spasticity, severe chronic nausea and emesis, pancreatitis, neuropathy, multiple kidney infections, kidney failure, um, insomnia, syncope, and severe and chronic pain. Um, all of these diseases are counteract with each other and cause me an amount, amount of pain. Um, currently, I have not had my medication taken away from me. I am pre-approved for the next six months. However, I just got another note from my Blue Cross insurance company stating that as of February, even if I have a pre-authorization, I need to go through all of these hoops and, lad and jump through the hoops again to try to get the medication back. My doctor has spent endless, endless hours trying to help me maintain my medicine because without my medicine, I end up in severe pain as well as I completely lose function of whatever organ system that it is affecting my my body attacks my organ system. I've had kidney failure, I've had liver, I've had liver issues, I've had all of these issues and they are directly relating to pain. When my pain is out of control, then my body reacts by shutting down an organ system. I've been hospitalized over 200 days over the past four years because of this and um, 
it, it's affecting my life. I also have two children that are ages 8 and 10. Please consider everybody when you're doing this. Um, I don't want to sound like I am coming across unsympathetic. Um, we lost a living nephew to um, a heroin overdose. So I am very keen on what the problem is and how to help the people that need help. Um, but in order to help the people that need help, let's not hurt the people that have been helping everyone else. We're using pain as a weapon at this point. Um, basically, if you take medication for pain, you are no longer a viable human being and it, it's just awful what we're doing to our pain patients in the United States. Hi there, my name is Amy. I am from Virginia and I'm a chronic pain patient. I have Crohn's disease, hypoparathyroidism, as well as MS. To help manage all my pain, I um, have been taking pain medications and these have enabled me to lead a normal life. Um, I have three children and um, you know I've been able to take my kids and take them places. I've been able to go and see the world with my kids. I've been able to travel with my husband, um, go on his business trips with him. Um, my kids are homeschooled and I have been able to take them places, uh, do fun things with them, go on field trips, um, just do all kinds of things. And now that I have been scaled way back, um, eventually leading to being cut off um, on pain medication, um, you know, unfortunately my life has drastically changed. Um, I have had to hire help um, because I don't ever know if I'm going to have a good day or a bad day. I don't know if tomorrow when I wake up, um, if I'm going to be able to get out of the bed. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take my son, my oldest son, to his events. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be equipped uh, to deal with my autistic son. Um, you know, I, I don't know how my pain is going to be. I don't, I don't know if, if I'm going to be able to tolerate anyone touching me. Um, you know, so I, I, I don't know what tomorrow will bring. And I always have to be prepared, especially with special needs child. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take a shower. Um, I don't know if I'm going to spend the day in so much pain that I'm going to be in the bathroom puking. Um, you know, I just, I never know. Um, people take so much for granted. Um, showers, for instance. I mean, look at my hair. It's so incredibly greasy. I mean, it just looks disgusting. And, I mean, I haven't taken a shower in, what, probably a week? And I just can't afford to waste my pain pills on things like a shower. I just save them for doctor's appointments and stuff, you know? Save them for when my legs give out and I can't get up off the floor because I'm in so much pain and I don't have the strength or the energy to get up off of the floor. And, you know, I mean, Hi, Joyce from Little River, South Carolina, 68 years old, married, retired nurse. I have arthritis, degenerative disc disease, three pinched nerves, a fatal back surgery, Sogren's disorder, fibromyalgia, and a few other painful things. With my back, with my pain medication, I can live partly normal life, play with my grandchildren, run my pet business, and um, 
go out to eat with my husband without my pain medication. I can't get out of bed. I can just about make it to the bathroom and I don't sleep at night. So my pain medicine makes me be able to live a, a little bit of a normal life. Hi, my name is Sherry. I'm from Watauga, Texas. I've been disabled since 98. I've been diagnosed with spinal stenosis, fibromyalgia, uh, radiculopathy, neuropathy, and they're testing me for other things as well. Um, I started uh, pain management back in 98. Before the pain medication, I tried biofeedback, the injections into my spine, um, the rhizotomies, the uh, facet injections, um, uh, anti-inflammatories, um, and uh, numerous other things. It wasn't until 2003 when I had my doctor implant a intrathecal drug infusion pump into my spine that I was able to get pain control and was able to do, you know, take care of my house and my family and have a somewhat normal life. Uh, last year, my pump got, uh, the catheter got cut and which caused a lot of problems, making me become septic. The pump had to come out. So now my pain control is not what it used to be. And um, due to the CDC guidelines, um, the doctors cannot properly treat my pain and my quality of life is not what it used to be. My name is Dana from Texas. I have stenosis of the spine in my neck and lower back. I have fibromyalgia. I have degenerative disc disease in my back. I have arthritis, degenerative joint. I have chronic trochanteric bursitis in my hips. I have three bone on bone, on bone joints that all need replacement. I have failed back surgery syndrome and I also have chronic fatigue from a viral infection. Life without pain medicines, I can only be up and doing things for a very short time each day. My activities are very limited. Um, I'm bedridden as the pain increases on a daily basis. Life with pain medicine, I can participate in life, not like before I was run over by a drunk driver in a pickup truck, but I can do some things and my life can continue to a certain degree. Hi, my name is Kim. I'm an Army veteran that lives in Indiana. I have lupus, fibromyalgia, antiphospholipid syndrome, scoliosis, severe degenerative disc disease, spinal canal and severe foraminal stenosis, faucet disease and osteoarthritis. With medication, I'm able to kayak and fish, do some housework and visit relatives and enjoy life. I'm not considered a candidate for surgery because of my clotting disorders. Without medication, I spend the majority of the day in bed with ice picks trying to numb the pain. I have been treated for frostbite because of using too much ice. Life without medication is sometimes just sitting around hoping I'll die so that the pain will end. Hi, my name is Jessie Hegwood and I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which means that my connective tissue does not connect in the way that most people's does. Uh, I'm actually recovering from my second surgery of the year related to EDS. Uh, my tendons have torn themselves apart to the point where they're no longer able to perform their function and um, the pain is just horrific. Anyways, uh, with meds, I am able to cook dinner for my children. I am able to play with them and take them outside to the park. I am able to do the laundry and clean the house and basically interact like a reasonably normal human being within limitations. I still have to be careful. Uh, without medication, I, I can't do hardly anything. I'm laid in bed, I'm curled up in a ball with a hot pack and life is horrific. 
Uh, I can't move. My body aches so badly. Um, I fall over when I stand up because the pain is just excruciating. Um, my pain medication allows me to live a halfway normal life. However, with it being such a problem right now, I am limited to a very small dose. I have two three hour segments of the day in which I can get things done. And so that's what I do. I take my meds in the morning and I get my morning chores done. And then I go about my day until I can take it no longer. And then I take my evening meds and I cook my kids dinner, cuddle them, put them to bed. And then I go curl up in a ball and hurt because by then the meds have worn off. But even that little bit, it's enough. It's enough so that I can be there for my kids. I wish I could have better pain management. I wish that this was not the situation I was in. I have never abused my meds. I have been on the same medication for three years. I have never run out early. I have passed every drug screen. And I just want to live my life. I just want to be there for my children and take care of them and love them the way that they deserve to be loved. Uh, be able to have fun with them and uh, you know all that good stuff so that's my story hello I'm Jesse and this is my son Liam hi hi so I wanted to ask Liam two questions one what happens when mama takes her medication happy and play happy and play what happens when mama doesn't have her medication? Sad and re I get sad and she's resting. Yeah. It's more fun to have a mama who can play with you, huh? Yeah! <laughs> All right. Well, so let's see, what do we want to say? Let's say, please help end the injustice of goofy-faced kids of people suffering in pain needlessly just because someone else chose to abuse their meds. Right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jerry Ann. I'm 51 from Indiana. I've been diagnosed with MS, rheumatoid arthritis, stenosis, failed back syndrome. My spine is collapsing. I've had three major back surgeries, 22 procedures, I have tried just about every modality of pain relief. I've been on pain medication since 1989 up until a year ago. I used to have some sort of normal life with pain medicine. I used to walk around the block with my grandkids. I used to play. I used to be able to go on outings with my family. I used to shop clean house, do just about anything non-stressful to the body as I possibly could, and I enjoyed it. Now I don't enjoy life. Put it simple, I don't enjoy life. I love my grandkids, I wish I could play with them. I can't sleep, I can't concentrate. I have an incredibly hard time enjoying anything in life. The pain is nonstop. My name is Leslie Dillman, and I live in Charlestown, Indiana, and I have adhesive arachnoiditis. I just woke up about 2 o'clock in the morning to pain that can only be described as being jump-started by a car battery. I take opioid medications three and four times a day, and sometimes that's not enough to keep this from happening. But I wanted you to see the aftermath, what my life would be like daily without my medication. And I wanted you to know that at one point over the summer, I was denied my medication because it was on a national back order due to DEA regulations. The DEA told the pharmaceutical company that they made too many pills. So I couldn't get it. <clears throat> But I could have gone five miles down the road from my house and gotten free methadone and clean needles. 
even though I went to pain management and jumped through every hoop to get a legal prescription, I couldn't get it because of the government overreach. I understand that you're trying to prevent addiction, but less than 1% of legally obtained prescriptions result in addiction. And I live a productive, normal life, work full time, go to church every Sunday, raise a family and a grandson because of my opioid medications, not in spite of them. Please stop any further restrictions from my medication and help me live. Hi, I'm Judy and I'm 55 years old and live in Ohio. I have been in chronic pain since the year of 2000. My current diagnoses are degenerative disc disease, L3, 4, 4, 5, and 5S1. I have had a spinal fusion. I also have spinal stenosis, facet disease, nerve damage, epidural fibrosis, S1 joint disorder, and I also have an autoimmune liver disease called primary biliary cholangitis, <clears throat> which causes body-wide muscle and joint pain. Before my injury, I was a very active woman. I enjoyed travel, dancing, and other physical activities. After my injury and my chronic pain started, it was so bad that I started developing suicidal ideologies. After exhausting all other modalities, including but not limited to physical therapy, massage, non-opioid pain manage medications, traction, psychology, and a spinal cord stimulator, I was started on opioid therapy. That's when my life, life began to change. Though I still have, ha I still have pain, I was able to I'm sorry, I still had pain. I was able to function enough to keep up my home and occasionally go out to dinner or family events. During the time on opioid therapy, I was compliant with my pain contract, always in compliance with my pill counts and my urine drug screens. In August of 2017, my doctor abruptly cut my breakthrough medication by half, informing me that I was to be weaned off my meds by the end of 2018. Since then, my days are spent mostly on the couch. I can manage one household chore at a time with a day or two in between for recovery. I also do not shop or go out very often. I have also been having blood pressure spikes when my pain is at its worst. I think the hardest thing though to live with is not being able to spend quality time with my grandchildren. Something has to give. I can't keep living like this, and that hundreds of thousands of others can't either. Done. Bear with me. Okay, um, this takes for a while. Let's see where we even begin. I have osteoporosis, negative four. Um, anybody that knows anything about osteo problems? That's not a good. Um, I started out as a young child, survived child abuse, rape, suicide survivor. I'm hurting and I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing my friends hurt. But until my last days, I will continue to fight. Now, I have metal down my right leg all the way from my hip to my knee. My right hip has been replaced. My left knee has been replaced. My whole neck, even though they did such a wonderful job, has been fused five levels. That's C2 through C7. Anyone that knows, that's the base of your skull to the shoulder. Now, because of abuse from others, 
lots of x-rays, see? I was born with a cleft palate hair lip, and so I had lots of surgeries. Um, I think my first one was six months. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Um, my family, my my sisters committed suicide. My mom's dead. My dad's dead. I'm basically the left, um, the only one left now. So there's not a whole lot to ask. Um, I don't even know where to begin. Just help us. Please, just help us get out of pain. I don't want to lose another friend. 